So this President Lincoln here, this is an issue. It has an issue with reset. I believe it's reset anyway. Sometimes when you turn it on, at least if it's been off for a period of time, when you turn it on, the display doesn't come up, it doesn't run, nothing functions, all right? The microprocessor just doesn't run properly. But if you turn it on off several times, over a period of time, it will suddenly start working and then it will be okay after that. So it's got like this power down delay. So if it's been off for a few days or a week or something, then you start to see this problem. It does make this kind of hard to troubleshoot because you can't just turn the thing on and off and on, on, off, on, off and test it and see what's going on. So what I've done now is I've set up my four channel signal scope up here using all four channels and I'm probing the VDD line of the MPU. I'm probing a reset line which is like a power good signal from a supervisor IC and also probing the reset line of the MPU as well. And one probe which is on channel 4 is also probing the input voltage to the supervisor IC because I want to monitor that voltage and see if it's actually working correctly on put up in case it's got a slow rise time or something like that, I'm not sure. So using all four channels, channel 4 is not really critical right now, I just want to see what's going on, I'm trying to catch as much information as I can when I try this. So I've got the scope set up hopefully correctly, I've got it set at 10 milliseconds per division, so I've got what was it, a dozen divisions across there, so I can see 100 milliseconds or so. Set a single trigger, so that should just grab the sample and hold it. I don't know if this is going to trip out or not. I don't know if it's going to have a problem to reset. It may work, it may not. The only way to find out is turn the power on and see if it turns on normally or not. Now, the other thing is, once I've got a capture on, I turn it back off again straight away. I don't want to charge all the circuitry up. I don't want that to potentially affect subsequent tests. So I want to turn it on, see if it's dead, turn it off again and see what the capture did. And then repeat that and see if the capture changes. So that's the plan. All right, so here we go. Let's turn the power supply on. Power switch is currently off. Let's turn it on. We've already captured a spike. We don't want that to happen. Here we go. And that wasn't tripped out. That booted up. Damn it. <laughs> Not what I wanted. VDD line, which I'm triggering from, was staying high because it's been charged by a supercapacitor. So I've shorted that capacitor out to discharge it. We should now see a trigger again. Here we go. So I wanted. So I'll just change the time base on the scope again. The last one I did was 20 milliseconds. Now it's 50 milliseconds of vision because it seems like it's stretched out a little more than I expected. Discharge the capacitor. Let's turn it on. Here we go. That's what we want. So there's a the reset pulse here on and off. So what I'm just trying now is to see if I can make it fault, and I can make it fault. What I've done now is I've put in a 6.8k resistor across between 0 volts and pin 56, which is the output from the supervisor IC. And that's part of the timing circuitry and, and what have you, so that's used to tell the IC when it's got good power. Now because I've got that resistor across there, it's also creating loading on the supervisor IC. And as a result, we're only getting about 2 volts. See, it's only gone one division. When that rises to 2 volts, I've got no display when it turns on. All right, so I've done a capture that. Let's just save that. Let's do another single. And we'll turn it back on again. See? Now, this top line here, that's that VDD line, which has got the capacitor keeping it charged up. So this one may or may not be present, depending on sequencing, but I've changed the triggering now to be on the pink line here, so channel 2 is now triggering. Okay, so we don't, right now with this state we don't have a display. Okay, so we'll do a, actually do normal trigger, and let's go down to, let's just go to 8.2 k's, slightly higher resistance, so it should be a higher voltage, turn it on. We have no display, voltage has indeed increased slightly, so now about 2.2 volts roughly. Channel 2 will actually increase this level, make it a little bit easier to see. How's that? So that's there, let's do 10k. There we go, it's about 2.5 volts now, and the display came on. It needs to be about 2.5 volts in order for the display to turn on. Now, if playing with the resistance box here, what I've discovered as well is that I can make the display come on and off depending on what resistance is. So it could already be booted up, but it won't have a display unless I have resistance set, so it gets a high enough voltage here. So if it, could, it could be running like it is now, and I could drop the voltage down and then the display will go off. And as I bring it back up again, it will come back on again. So it's obviously just 
checking for the power system being okay. So it must be an analog input onto the MPU and it's then checking to make sure the voltages are okay. Right now I'm doing 100k into it and that's what I've got. So that's so that one, two, three, four and a half volts on that pin there. So I'm actually wondering if this slow rise time, that rise time there is part of the problem. It does make me wonder a little bit about that. So let's just play with rise time, see if that's part of the issue. Okay, so I've now got my resistance box pulling to the 5 volt rail with a resistor. Right now I've got a set of 560k, so it's basically doing nothing. Our rise time is um, 46.27 milliseconds on that edge there. Okay, and it is doing the full 5 volts, it does get there. But the rise time is 46.27 milliseconds. That may be what the problem is. So let's turn it off. Let's bring it down to say 100k. Try again. Right, let's do 22k. 30 milliseconds. Uh -huh. We're getting somewhere. Rise time is getting faster. Let's do 10k. 21 milliseconds. 4.7k 12 milliseconds so what I'm wondering is maybe the pull up might be too weak that's on that system and maybe it can't supply enough current to switch quickly enough and so the rise time is too slow on the edge and maybe that's what's part of the problem is it can't put enough current out so therefore the edge is too slow and it's causing the CPU to lock up that's what I'm wondering so let's go a bit lower let's do 2.2k Look at that. So that's now 14 milliseconds. And you can see it's a nice, it's getting quite square now, it's quite good. Let's go down to 1k. And there we go. Last time is 200 nanoseconds now. I'm actually wondering if maybe that's what's wrong with these things. That rise time is too slow and it may be causing a lock up. Let's try pulling it down again. So I've got my thing pulling down, a 47k it sets you right now. Let's turn it on. So we go, rise time is 37 milliseconds. Pulling down instead. Um, but is limiting the voltage. That's only 4 volts. I've got to set to 2 volts of the vision. So there's only 4 volts there. So although the rise time isn't looking that bad, if you look at the voltage levels, it should be coming up higher. So therefore the rise time should actually be a lot slower than that. If I go down to say 22k, do the same again. Here we go, rise time 25 milliseconds, but again the voltage is much lower than it should be. It's only doing I don't know, less than three volts anyway. Oh sorry, just over three volts, about three and a half volts it's doing. I actually think maybe what I should be doing is putting a resistor across these to help pull them up. So this reset problem is a thing I've seen multiple times over the years on different radios. So this is why I'm trying to investigate this because I'd like to pin down what's causing this once and for all. Because it is a system problem which comes and goes and it's not always there sometimes you see it just randomly on a radio I'll just do it once and it'll be fine it won't do it again this so time I'm just trying to figure out whether it even is a reset problem it might be something else up here is a circuit diagram for this thing this is the MPU over here this is the supervisor IC this output here goes high when it turns on so it gets the voltage comes in here it checks the voltage make sure it's at least 4.5 volts maybe slightly lower than that even Depends on the tolerances on this thing. And once it's sure the voltage is okay, it puts that high signal, which comes along here, through here, up to pin 56. That's the pin I'm currently modifying with the resistors. Okay, pin 56. Now if you look on here, you see there's a pull-up resistor here, 10k pull-up already in place, which is obviously there to help the rise times and help the current carrying because obviously this can't drive enough current. Because this has got to drive through this timing circuitry here and this transistor. So obviously the current drive from this isn't really enough to do this job. So they're doing that to help bootstrap it a little bit. So this then comes through, this is the time of circuitry, it's got a capacity here. And these actually cause it to do a pulse. We've got a NPN transistor, so then that's positive. This whole thing will be positive, it'll turn that on. All right, until the capacitor charges up. When the capacitor charges up, then it'll turn off and go low. We'll get this side to go low in comparison, right? That's the way it works. And it's also why there's a resistor here to help that happen. Alright, so it ties it to the ground, and also you get some current going through the transistor as well. 
So when that turns on positive, which it does initially, which is why you got this instant pulse over here. I can't see it in shot now, but that's why there's an instant pulse. So pink line, I suppose. That is what's coming out of that supervisor IC. And that's why it ramps up. That's that capacitor charging. That's why you can see that happening. As the current reduces, the more charged the capacitor is, the lower the current draw is, and therefore the voltage comes up. That's why it's doing that. And that's also why this pulse is instantly on, because that is basically passes the positive straight through. But as the capacitor charges up, this side goes low. And once it's fully charged, it will actually switch. Okay, so it'll pull down, it'll turn the transistor back off again. But and that transistor's turned on, that pulls this low, which turns this PNP transistor on, which has also got some smoothing and stuff here as well, which, which is that turns that pulse on there. Okay, so when that transistor turns on, that's what generates this pulse. Kind of convoluted way of doing it. <laughs> I guess I didn't want it randomly resetting, they wanted it to just be a single time thing and that's it. But um, anyway, that's the way I've designed it. The main thing I was saying here is that, that pull, pull up 10k resistor right there, which is bootstrapping this supply. So I think that if I add another resistor across there to help pull it up a bit more, it will make that rise time a bit quicker and maybe that will solve the problem. So I'm going to do a modification. I'm going to put this radio aside for a couple of weeks and I'll come back to it again and see if it plays up. Because if it doesn't play up, then I know what's caused it. It's that rise time. If it still does it, then it's something else. I don't know what it is. So it's been weeks, many weeks, I don't know. It's probably been at least a month, maybe six weeks, since I was last looking at this radio. What I did before was try a modification to the reset circuitry. So what I'm hoping now is that the reset circuitry will actually reset properly and it will solve the problem this radio had. That's what I'm hoping. So just a reminder, what the radio had was if it's been off for a period of time, when you first turn the radio on, the CPU or the MPU, the processor, wouldn't start up. And it'd take a few goes or a bit of time for the processor to start. So let's plug power in, plug an antenna in as well, just in case. Let's have a go. What's going to happen? So let's turn this on and what do we get? Hey, it started up. It worked. And again. It worked. Brilliant. So that's done the job. So previously it wouldn't start up first time or even the first few times you turn the switch on it wouldn't work until it had a bit of a chance to warm up a little bit I think or something. I don't know but this is brilliant. It's now working exactly as it's supposed to. So this other modification to the reset circuitry did indeed fix it. So that's a good thing to know. So when I do come across a radio in the future which has got the same kind of problem, I know how to resolve it. Excellent. That's a nice tip. Hope you found it interesting. Thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. And click like if you liked it. Bye.